Hey guys and girls, welcome to another Woods Windshield, Woods Water and Windshield. <laughs> I can't even remember what I call this segment. Woods, Water and Windshield, and we're gonna talk about how to catch bass that are suspended, but a little bit different than you might think they are because we've kind of run into a situation this spring that, uh, well, I'm just gonna tell you about it. I'm just gonna tell you about it. I'm just gonna talk to you for a few minutes. By the way, as I'm driving down the highway, uh, I set this up while I was back there getting gas a few minutes ago. All I'm doing driving right now, I'm not even really looking at the uh, camera. It's set up on my, uh, the dash of my Ram here. It's just sitting there, might not be exactly straight. I don't know, but uh, it's straight enough. It'll, it'll get us by. But just driving down the highway and thought I'd visit with you a little bit about suspended bass you know suspended bass have become a really big part of our repertoire since we have the garmin live scope we've caught a lot of really big fish i'm talking seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen pound bass uh really really big bass huge bass by finding these fish suspended over deep water but now that we moved into the springtime most of these big fat, big bass are not suspended over that deep water anymore. And I'm talking about suspended over deep water, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 foot deep. And, uh, and catching those fish suspended not very far down and seeing them on the live scope and spotting them and catching really, really big fish. But that said, that's really not where the fish are in the south. We're talking about what's going on right now, right now, right now. And the fish are in all different phases of the spawn right now in the south. We've just gone through I don't know if you call it the March moon or the April moon. We've just gone through uh, a moon that sort of almost transcended both months, and uh, but I'd call it the March moon. A lot of the fish spawned on that March, March moon. A lot of them are gonna spawn on the April moon, quite a few on the May moon, of course, further north on the June moon. Uh, they, they spawn more than on one moon everywhere, and God's got that set up that way. So if something happens that messes up the spawn on one moon, they can do it again next month. You know, water comes up real high, the water drops down, leaves the eggs high and dry. All kinds of situations, all kinds of situations like that. So, um, paying attention when I got cars around me, especially people passing me. I've got my cruise control set on the interstate, 73 miles an hour, 75 mile an hour speed limit. So we are in really, really good shape out here. But back to <clears throat> back to those spawning fish. You're going to find them spawning, obviously, on north banks, east banks, gentle sloping banks. Uh, pea gravel type banks work really, 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 really well. That's the type of places you want to look for. But a lot of the fishermen that I'm talking to right now are finding a lot of males in those areas. They're finding a few females, but a lot of males, it's kind of the thing, same thing that happens every single year, year in and year out. Where are those big females? Well, they're suspended somehow out away from that. Now, a lot of those fish will be out in seven or eight foot of water, and you can catch them running baits down seven or eight foot, crank baits, big spinner baits, slow rolling big spinner baits, jerk baits, those kind of things. But let me tell you where we have been finding most of the big bass lately, if they're not up in the real shallow water, two, three, four foot of water. That's where everybody's fishing. That's where everybody's fishing. And everybody's catching them. I mean, the fish is real good right now. But where we are finding those fish is suspended out away, really up high in the water column. And uh, now they're gonna do this after they get through spawning uh, also, and I'll talk about that at the end of this video. But, um, but they are suspended high in the water column. Now, depending on how clear the lake is and how muddy the lake is, the, the higher the, the muddier it is, the higher they're going to get. The clearer it is, the deeper they're going to get. But they are not down at the bottom. They may be at 10 foot of water, 15 foot of water, 20 foot of water, 25 foot of water. If you've got moss, they're going to be suspended on top of the moss. If you've got trees, they're going to be suspended up at the tops of the trees. And where we have been catching them in the clear water lakes lately is suspended in treetops, out in front of spawning areas, in about trees that are 15 or 20 foot deep trees that are 15 or 20 feet deep and these fish are suspended up in the clear water up still up high in the water column maybe three four five foot deep depending you know how thick these trees are if the trees are not very deep they're, they're very thick they'll be suspended up maybe five foot deep if the, the trees are, are really thick and like cedar trees got a lot of branches on them they might be up two or three foot of the surfaces on three foot 
if the water's muddy, they're gonna be up in the first two foot of the surface. Now, how do you catch these fish? How do you go about catching these fish? Two or three techniques work real good. A sinking worm works exactly perfectly. Something like a Lucky Strike Pal Stick will work. A sinking worm, but now when I'm fishing these deeper trees, here's what I do a little bit different. I don't fish it totally weightless. This is a big secret. This is something you really wanna do. Don't share this with somebody you go to compete against. Don't, I don't compete against tournaments anymore, so I don't mind. But, <laughs> but a sinking worm like a pal stick, a lucky strike pal stick works really well. But here's what I've been doing a little bit differently. I've been putting a 1 16th ounce, a 1 16th ounce slip sinker, not pegging it, 1 16th ounce slip sinker on a regular worm, like a baby Huey, a sneaky snake, a regular worm, a curly tail worm, and a large worm, because I'm fishing for large fish. I'm talking a seven, eight, nine, 10 inch worm, 16th ounce lead. It's gonna sink very, very slowly. Now don't put any bigger head on that. Don't put eighth ounce, don't put eighth ounce, 16th ounce. It's still gonna sink very, very slowly. It has the same general attributes of a sinking worm, except it's a regular worm. It's got more action. Got more action because you do something like a, a, a paddle tail or a, a, a twister tail type like it's on a sneaky snake and let me tell you a color that works really really well strawberry that's right red red is a color that works really really well now we catch one a lot of other colors obviously uh, a motor oil color is real good green pumpkin green pumpkin red green pumpkin red frank is probably would be my number two choice but a strawberry worm and, and again, these fish are up in a, in a high in water column. So if you're going down and fishing a bank where is a good spawning type bank, you might see some males cruising in there. You might see a female every now and then. Turn around and fish behind you in any structure that you have where you can fish that 16th ounce Texas rig worm. That's right, totally Texas rig. Uh, I skin hook it with the hook back into the I, I can show you how to do that right now, but I'm driving. I can't show you how to do that. But the point of the hook, skin hook back into that worm, so it's totally weedless rig. Uh, you use heavy line. I like to use 15, 17, 20 pound test high seas uh, uh, Grand Slam line. It just works really, 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 really well. Uh, this is a great technique to catch these big bass early in the year when before they moved in on the bed and when you have males in building the beds, cruising around, looking for beds, all of this kind of stuff. So that's a good technique in really, really clear water. Light, light slip sinkers. What do you do if the water's really, really muddy? What do you do if it's dingy to muddy? Which it is in a lot of part of the country. We haven't had much rain in Southern Oklahoma, so our lakes are a little bit low and they are really pretty clear, really pretty clear. So that's why we use this type technique there. If you got muddy water, dingy water, dirty water, you can run a spinnerbait through the tops of those trees. You can run a spinnerbait over the tops of that water column. You can run a spinnerbait in 10, 15, 20 foot of water and catch these big female bass. That's right. I, di I did that on Lake Dardanelle for years and years and years and years. And it was a technique I just wouldn't share with anybody. Just would not share with anybody. So you can go to a lake like Lake Dardanelle, anywhere all up and down the Arkansas River, all of the lakes that's all up and down the Arkansas River, and fish in the treetops right now right now, this time of the year, uh, and catch those big female bass out in 10, 15, 20 foot of water, running the spinnerbait right on top. I'm talking about rippling. I'm talking about keeping the spinnerbait right on top. I'm not talking about running two or three foot down. Now you can do that, but if it's got, you got muddy water, create that wake up there. The higher the spinnerbait is to the, the surface of the water, the more vibration that creates, the more noise it creates. So if you got it right up on top of the water, those big five, six, seven pound bass will jump out of there and try to jerk that rod out of your hand. I'm telling you, try to jock, jerk that rod out of your hand. So it's an extremely, extremely, extremely good way to uh, to catch them right now, right now, the big fish. Now you catch a lot of little fish up on a bank and you get big fish up on a bank. Remember when those big female bass go up there to spawn, they actually don't stay up there very long. Uh, the bigger the fish, the less they spend on that nest. You're talking about the giants, 10, 11, 12, 13 pound bass. They're not gonna be there, but maybe a day or two at the most. You find you 11 or 12 pounder, better go ahead and catch her. She probably won't be there the next time you go back. When you catch her, give her a kiss, turn her loose. But these big fish are not gonna stay on that bed very long. They're gonna be out in front of the bedding areas and they're gonna be suspended up high in the water column. Now. We might as well talk about, and I might do another video back after the spawn's over, but we might as well talk about right now what the bass do after the spawn. 
They cannot go deep. They do the exact same thing they did before the spawn. They suspend. They suspend out on points. They suspend underneath boat docks. Boat docks is another area to, uh, that you can use this technique too. If you have a lake that doesn't have grass or doesn't have uh, trees that they'll suspend over, they'll suspend right under boat docks. But high in the water column, again, right up close to the top. Not down to the bottom, right up close to the top. But after a bass gets through spawning, the female bass, they do, they do exactly, they do exactly the same thing. They go back out, they go back out and they suspend, they suspend in some sort of cover and the exact same techniques will work on them. Now, after they got through spawning, you can add another, uh, another lure to what you're, you're trying to catch these fish on. Add a jerk bait, add a jerk bait, and a jerk bait can work both before and after the spot, but you can add a big topwater bait, like a big walking bait, big Zara spook, some kind of bait that'll walk, something maybe it's got some props on it, something that you can cause those fish to come from a long way. Now, if you don't have any cover at all, if you're fishing lakes that does not have any cover at all for them to get in and hide and suspend high in the water column, after they get through spotting, they are still high in the water column. Invariably, they will suspend on points and you have to stay way back away from them if the water's clear. The water's dingy, you can get up closer. Clear water, stay way back, find you a bait. Again, that's why Zara Spook's a good choice after they spawn. You can throw it a long way. A whopper plopper, that's another good choice. You can throw it a long way and catch those fish that are suspended up high in the water column. Guys and girls, that's your immediate tip for today. Immediately be able to go out and catch fish doing exactly what I've talked about and not only catch bass, but catch really, really large bass. This is a bonus video. This is not on one of our uh, our Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday videos. This is a bonus video we're throwing up here, but it, it's just a dynamite tip for what you can do today, what you can do today, what you can do tomorrow, what you can do within the next week or two, what you can do on the next month's moon, the next month's moon, depending on where you're living around the country. This is a dynamite way. Remember, those fish suspended high in the water column. Catch them on Jimmy Houston Legend Spinner Baits. Catch them on Square Bill Crank Baits. Catch them on Sinking Worms and Big Worms with small 1 16th ounce slip sinkers. And I promise you, you got a chance. You got a chance because those fish, before they spawn, they're the biggest they're going to be all year long. You got a chance to catch your PB using this exact technique. Guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one today. When you catch a fish, you catch a big one, be sure to take a picture, post it on Jimmy Houston Outdoors Facebook page, all capital letters, Jimmy Houston Outdoors. If you're not subscribed to Jimmy Houston Outdoors YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button right now. We've got two channels on YouTube, Catch of the Day, which is the most important channel on YouTube. Subscribe to that, watch a few of those five, six, seven minute videos. If you don't like it, unsubscribe. But I promise you, the Catch of the Day channel will change your life. Ah, all right. The subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We got almost 100,000 subscribers on uh, Jimmy Houston Outdoors YouTube. When we hit 100,000, we're going to give away a fishing trip to a YouTube subscriber and another fishing trip to a Facebook subscriber to fish with me on my ranch in Southern Oklahoma. Man, it's not just a fishing trip, it's gonna be a catching trip, a catching trip. Go to our Sunday afternoon chat. We tell you how to enter that contest to win that fishing trip. Uh, remember to put down a Y2 if you're uh, watching on YouTube, uh, FB if you're watching on Facebook, because we're gonna give away a trip uh, both ways. If you're not on both Facebook and YouTube, get on them, that'll allow you two entries. So, guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one today. Have a fantastic day, and remember, Kiss those fish, turn them back. I sure do love you. Oh my, I just about forgot. I just about forgot. Uh, yeah, let me tell you just how effective this technique is. And I, I don't want to give him any, anything away my buddy, but my buddy Al Fisher over at Lucky Strike, who knows about as much about fishing lures as anybody in the world. I mean, he's been in this business forever and is a great friend of mine. He fishes a lot of local tournaments and does extremely well. Uh, he finished second place, I think, down at Broken Bow just a, a week or so ago. And, but he won a tournament uh, in Oklahoma this past weekend fishing exactly the way that I'm talking about, exactly the way that I'm talking about. I just visited with him, and uh, he was fishing high up in the water column. The water was pretty muddy. The lake was low, and those bigger fish was high in the water column. He missed catching big bass by one ounce. And uh, I told him, I said, Al, you're kind of on a roll now, man, in second place, first place. And, 
and he's been right up there in the top just about every tournament here lately. And he said, well, Jimmy, these are this is not the Bassmaster Elite tournaments that I'm fishing. <laughs> these are smaller tournaments. But, you know, it doesn't matter in bass fishing. Uh, I, uh, I, I, we were just out fishing uh, with, uh, with my granddaughter, Jordan, and, uh, and I was in a boat with uh, Jordan and, and Jamie and Mandy and, and John and Casey was in another boat. So they had four in their boat and, and, and just Jordan and I. And Jordan and I caught 43, and four of them in a boat only caught 24. So everybody had fun. Everybody had a great day fishing. But Jordan said, boy, we beat them pretty bad, didn't we? And I said, Jordan, we wasn't tournament fishing. We were just having fun. She said, yeah, I know. But she said, all bass fishing is competition. <laughs> and it really is. That's just the way bass fishing is. I'll tell you a funny story about that someday. But uh, just remember, high in that water column right now, a lot of big fish. Go out there and whack a few.